Ten minutes. Must have broken open chunks of some sort. I need. I, you Timmy just calls it. You know, so enough's enough. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Like to call the order the city of Joliet. COVID-19 pandemic financial response plan for April 14th. Here in the council chamber, Mayor Bob Oderkirk presiding. We'll begin with roll call. Mayor Oderkirk. Here. Councilman Dickinson. Here. Councilwoman Gavin. Here. Councilman Hug. Here. I am here. Here. Councilman Morris. Here. Councilman Mudrin. Here. Councilwoman Coleman. Here. <clears throat> Councilwoman Reardon. Here. Councilman Turk. Here. Let the record show Councilman Dickinson, <coughs> Councilwoman Gavin, Councilwoman Reardon, and Councilman Turk are all um, attending remotely. First on the agenda is citizens to be heard on agenda items. There was no one that submitted any email comments for this evening and no one um, registered on our portal for this evening for citizens to be heard. Okay. So next is the discussion of city finances and impacts of COVID-19. Uh, thank you. Uh, as council knows from uh, some of the weekly reports we've been giving you and some discussions at council meetings, um, from the day that uh, the lockdown order happened to present, we've been doing some serious analysis, uh, calculations, trying to put together models of whatever this uh, 2020 event is going to produce. Um, and we're now at a point of where our finance directors pulled enough financial data together to start the discussion. Um, I'll turn it over to Jim, and certainly there'll be plenty of uh, time for questions. And, uh, it's not, it's not good news is the ultimate uh, characterization of this. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Last Tuesday, I made a verbal presentation <coughs> of, uh, looking forward as to what the COVID-19 may do to our finances uh, in the near future, but more towards the end of this year. And uh, again, we're going to have to look at when we uh, form the 2021 budget, uh, how long the recovery is going to be, how fast and what's going to happen. Um, as of tonight, um, I can show you a snapshot of where we're at. Um, a lot, there's a lot of unknowns and that's uh, what's difficult about any financial presentation at this point. Uh, many of our revenue sources are projected to decline sharply. The magnitude of the decline is difficult to estimate because of a lag in reporting of major revenue sources. Uh, to illustrate that, um, I can use the um, sales tax, for example. In my presentation tonight, uh, we had not yet received the sales tax for January. Uh, we have received that uh, about $3.5 million. Uh, so that's good news. It's from January sales. It's pretty much even with uh, the last year's. But remember, we did not have COVID-19 in January, and there's a three-month lag. Uh, so if you uh, think about it, uh, we our shutdown started March 16th. So um, we'll get about a half of a month's regular revenues, and that'll come in June. But when the full shutdown happened, that was in April. So I will not know until July exactly where our revenues are going to decline. There's no doubt about it. Our revenues are going to decline. Um, and that comes to our, my second point, is the uncertainty out, out there is uh, unprecedented. Uh, there is no financial model that I can look to, whether it be regression analysis or trend analysis, that I can go to to predict what's going to happen in November of this year. Uh, this is unprecedented, really, in history. If you remember the real estate downturn, it was slow, and governments had more of a, a time to adjust to it. Uh, this is going to be sudden, and it's going to be deep. Um, 
just as a reminder, and I'll bring this point up later, uh, our 2020 budget was uh, uh, adopted, it was balanced. Our uh, revenue and expenditures were equal. And it was a difficult budget process. Uh, we had a lot of discussions and some dissent, but we did come to a balanced budget. Um, so I believe as of today, our expenditures are pretty much right in line with what we budgeted. However, our revenues are what, is, uh, what troubles me as a director of finance. As of today, there's no stimulus package at the federal or the state level for a city our size, and it's really uncertain if there will be one. There has been some money uh, through the stimulus package for cities over 500,000, and there is some community development block grant money that may be available to us in the future, but as I read the stimulus package, that is only for expenditures for COVID uh, operations. So we are tracking those, and uh, we may get those reimbursed through us through this community development block grant. But that doesn't help us uh, balance our operating expenditures. Uh, Mayor, quick question. Yeah. Before you go any further, and as for anybody that may, because we were all here today, most of us were, and anybody heard from either the president's or the, the governor's daily um, you know, briefings, if you will, um, May 1st going to be any different? Have they extended it or are we still, you know, as far as all the stay at homes and so such? As of today, the stay at homes are through May 1st. Okay. Many of the governors across the United States are talking about two more weeks. Um, the president uh, has not given a specific date from what I heard, uh, but he's indicated he wants to get back to business. And that points out to, you know, government. Our revenues are based on commerce, and we need commerce to fund our operations. And as long as the commerce is uh, pretty much at a st standstill, I mean, there's still some revenues coming in, uh, but uh, we need to get back to work. And um, we need to adjust our finances until we know when we're coming back to work and, you know, how. Uh, slow the recovery is going to be. Uh, it's clear from every expert I read, we're not going to go from shut down to being open. Uh, we're not going to fill stadiums, for example. Uh, some of the plans I've heard is uh, limited access to uh, uh, gatherings. Uh, some states have insisted that restaurants uh, do social distancing, so they won't be filled. Uh, but if you ask me, and this is my guess, I think we're going to be closed at least two more weeks. <coughs> we have not been sitting around doing nothing. We've been tracking our cash balances since this began. On March 16th, the governor announced that uh, uh, we are going to go into close down. So uh, we started tracking our uh, credits is our revenues and debits is our expenditures on this spreadsheet. And uh, uh, you can see our current balance went from 13 million on March 13th to about 9 million as of last week. And um, the daily activity, you can see the bottom there uh, we have used up $8.6 million of our cash uh, since this began. Um, but again, uh, this is typical at the beginning of the year. A lot of our revenues come in later. Uh, uh, but if you uh, see, we have outstanding checks, about $4.2 million. So our, our cash is, we're using up about $10 million a month. Um, uh, that uh, under transfer of investments, you'll see $5 million. This is just our cash. It's not our investments. So we have uh, about uh, 80 to $90 million in investments also. 
So as we use up our cash, we'll be uh, uh, you know, bringing in our investments. Most of our investments are with the Illinois Treasurer's uh, Fund. It's called a TIP. Um, so we have about uh, uh, $70 million in there. And then we have assorted CDs and other <coughs> investments. Is there a penalty pulling that money out? Um, <clears throat> there is a penalty if you cash in your CDs. Uh, the longest we have any CDs is 91 days. IPTIP is an overnight money market fund, which is there is no penalty. As of today, uh, they were paying the highest rate that I could find in the market. Um, and that's another challenge we're going to have. Interest rates are uh, bottoming out. So, uh, you know, we, we budgeted roughly 600000 in the general fund for investments this year. Uh, we'll be a fraction of that. If it's 10%, we'll be lucky. Uh, when I put the budget together, I was getting rates from the 2 to 3% rate. Uh, they're down to 0.11%. And that don't mean 1.1%. That means 0.11%, almost zero. So of the 70 million <coughs> investments we have, as you outlined just now, how much is in the sewer and water enterprise Fund. About twenty nine million. Okay. So I've looked at our revenue sources and tried to identify the revenue sources that are um, much more aligned than most of them. But I will tell you now we have about uh, two hundred revenue line items in the general fund. About 190 of those are going to be affected by the downturn in the economy. Uh, the, a good example is uh, the sales tax. Um, we, uh, let's look at the local home sales tax. Uh, we get about $2.1 million uh, per month. Um, but we're not going to lose all our sales tax. Um, if you think about it, there is uh, buying going out there, especially at the grocery stores. Uh, uh, a lot of the other stores like the Menards, the Lowe's, the uh, stores that uh, uh, are still open because they're essential. So we will be getting sales tax. At this time, it's impossible for me to guess how much. Sales tax is, uh, like I said, a, a three-month lag. So I won't even know until July how much April is affecting us. However, I can tell you, as you go down, the municipal waste penalty is going to be zero. We have turned that off. We are not charging penalty for that or interest for non-payment of bills. The wagering tax. So we got our uh, um, last payment for March. It was 89% down. And for April, it will be zero. Uh, the emissions tax, uh, we get a dollar for every turnstile <laughs> turn in each of our casinos. Uh, again, that was down 89%, and it will be zero. Uh, the gaming tax, the video gaming tax, uh, most of those are in um, bars which are closed, so very few of them. I would expect that probably would go to zero or very close to it. The income tax, uh, we get about 1.4 million a year. Um, unemployment is at an all time high. Uh, last month, the number of um, filings was three times higher than the largest number ever in the history since they've been tracking them. Uh, gasoline privilege tax, uh, as you remember, uh, we levied uh, one cent per gallon and we raised that to four cents per gallon. I have not uh, received my uh, March numbers yet, but uh, we all know there is a, a glut of gasoline out there. People are using a lot less gasoline. So I would imagine uh, that is not going to be uh, what we uh, uh, budgeted. The hotel motel tax, the food and beverage tax, 
Uh, we can expect those to drop anywhere from 80 to 90 percent more for the hotel, hotel motel. Uh, I just read today uh, one of our hotels is at 7 percent occupancy. Based on that figure, uh, I would imagine that would drop about 93 percent while we're still closed. Uh, food and beverage tax, uh, we know that they're still doing some deliveries and you know you can order your uh, uh, food and pick it up uh, many of the restaurants are doing that but uh, i would expect that to drop dramatically um, quite simply there's nobody in our restaurants so the online ordering and, and the uh, pickups and the deliveries uh, i won't know that until may how much that's going to drop. I would suspect at least 60%. Uh, interest on uh, investments, as I said, uh, we do have a full two months and a half of interest, but that's going to drop to zero also in the, in the future months. Uh, parking meter operations, uh, the parking fund is uh, budgeted to pay the general fund for administrative services in the amount of $340,000. Uh, as you know, the parking fund was in uh, deficit condition. We raised the rates to bring it out of deficit conditions, but we have virtually opened up our parking decks and uh, given a, uh, a holiday to the people who are paying the monthly amounts. Uh, we didn't feel it was fair that people wouldn't have to pay for parking fees on a nightly basis, but still charge our monthly uh, customers. Uh, based on that, if we were to lose it all, that's about $7.8 million a month we would be losing. Again, I don't suspect that to be 100%, but even if it's five or six million, it's really going to affect our cash balance. And then there's all the other line items, the replacement tax, for example. The replacement tax was uh, levied in the 70s to cover the personal property tax. It goes into a fund that the state administers. Uh, it's based on 2% of corporation profits. How much the profits are going to fall, it's going to be dramatic. Corp a lot of corporations are closed. Uh, Paramutual tax, uh, they closed down horse racing for quite a while, but I understand they're doing some without audiences, but I would feel uh, it's not a lot, uh, but that could drop also. The second largest uh, uh, revenue item we have is the property tax. Uh, we have levied uh, $39 million property tax for this uh, coming year. Uh, those collections will start in uh, July. Our largest uh, month usually is September or October. Um, most of that property tax goes into the police and fire pensions. Uh, 32 million as a community. About 6 million goes into the general fund. Uh, I cannot, we have very high collection rates, 98 to 99%. But when it comes to paying your, pro your uh, property tax, I cannot tell you what the percentage is going to be this year. With unemployment at 15% expected to rise, I would expect many people would not pay their property tax. And we will not get the cash. They may have to eventually pay it. Uh, another thing about the property tax is most of it goes to the police and fire pensions. Um, it's not clear if we don't collect enough property tax to cover our uh, minimum required contribution, whether we'd have to make that up to other sources. Uh, we've always made it. Uh, a few years ago, before I started, we actually made an additional payment to catch up. Uh, that is actuarially <coughs> computed. If we don't collect that $32 million, and even if we don't have to make it up, our contribution will skyrocket next year. It's already uh, actuarially computed to go up. Um, but again, the unknowns are greater than what I do know. 
Uh, the banks have uh, talked to the federal government about escrow accounts. I'll briefly explain that. Most people who pay uh, a mortgage uh, pay into uh, to a bank or your, your carrier, and that has an escrow account. And in that escrow account is a year's worth of property tax. If a person does not pay this year's property tax, under current law, they have to make that up out of these escrow accounts. While the banks are worried about draining those escrow accounts. Um, so that's another unknown out there. Uh, they may pay it as they're required, or the government may change it. Jim? Yes, sir. So your $3.3 million monthly shortfall <coughs> uh, predicted loss is completely a guesstimate on property tax? Correct. Okay. Correct. That is just a month. And of course, uh, as I said, we um, uh, don't collect that every month. It, it's basically the summer months. So it's generally a fixed number based, on, of course, on who pays. So obviously in this, in this economy, there could be a lot of defaulting on paying that. And that's what you're basing that guesstimate on. Yes, it's, it's uh, uh, one month of what we've levied. Again, I, I couldn't guess right now. I mean, uh, okay. what does 15% unemployment mean to the uh, uh, property tax? And think about it, also the income tax. Um, you know, uh, a lot of our cash flows are uh, based on people <coughs> paying their bills. Uh, if, if we have no penalties or interest, <coughs> is those collection rates going to keep up? Uh, I don't know. I mean, if I was a family and I didn't know if I was going back to work, uh, would you rather feed your family or uh, pay your water bill or your garbage bill? Um, so I would suspect uh, until we have a turnaround, people start going back to work, our collections will slow down. We have already seen a uh, slowdown in our water bill collections. Uh, we have, as you know, uh, discontinued shutoffs. Uh, we have turned on people who have called us and asked for, uh, uh, have their water turned on for health reasons. However, they were shut off for non-payment and they're still non-payment. So uh, we deal with that on a case-by-case case basis. The city manager and I met with each uh, department and went through each line item uh, to cut expenditures and line items that are not essential, to delay projects that are not essential, and to uh, delay <coughs> of items that can be put off until we know when, when and where the turnaround's coming. Uh, we went through each uh, a department, and um, as you can see, we have a list here. It's actually uh, three pages. Um, it, uh, large amounts, uh, as you can see, uh, the uniforms. Uh, we were gonna buy uh, uniforms uh, this year. Uh, we can delay that. Uh, we are also, uh, we are gonna buy the steel toe shoes. We think that's essential for our uh, um, workers, but we are talking about delaying the rest of the uniform purchases. Um, I'll, I'll go over the, the large items, the uh, uh, capital. Uh, uh, we, the first two capitals under uh, community development, that's the bus station. I believe the bus station uh, project is going to be delayed. Uh, we have not heard about uh, the uh, $8 million uh, we're supposed to get from PACE. Uh, so that project <coughs> will not start until the $8 million is not only committed, but uh, given to us. Um, delay the uh, comp plan. As you know, we're supposed to uh, uh, start the comprehensive plan this year. Uh, delay that. The land acquisition is, uh, that is what was known as the Slavic property, which we uh, budgeted for as, uh, in 2019, we amended our budget. However, I understand the Cullinan Group has already purchased that property. 
So that is one thing that we will not have to spend. Um, sales tax rebates, uh, I don't believe uh, if we aren't selling anything, we're not gonna have to rebate anything. So I believe that's a good number. Uh, <coughs> the Rialto and the uh, Joliet uh, uh, Historical Museum, uh, we've already paid the Rialto their first payment and uh, we're uh, uh, recommending that as to be delayed. Um, in the city manager's budget, uh, the newsletter, uh, we're recommending not sending out a newsletter until uh, we know what to put in it, basically. I mean, the news newsletter lists uh, events, uh, so we don't know, for example, when the slammers are going to be open or um, when uh, we're going to open up for business. I have a question. Uh, yes. Yes. <clears throat> the museum, are we holding off on their, on their payment as well? You, you went from the Rialto to the city manager. Oh, I, I mentioned that, yes, we're recommending holding For both that. of we them. We haven't yet. Okay, just wanted to make but, sure. But we are recommending that until uh, the turnaround comes. That's, that's half of the calendar. Right, right. I just wanted to make sure. Um, Thank you. Uh, the postage uh, in the city manager's is... That whole um, postage was for mailing the newsletter. So if we're not going to have a newsletter, we don't need to mail it. Uh, some other minor <laughs> items. Uh, IHSA, we spend about $46,000. Um, we are pretty sure that is going to be canceled. Um, Comcast Marketing is a, is a grant that we had, and we're recommending not to go forward with that grant. Our match was about 35000 The um, fire department uh, basically is uh, overtime, um, and um, they believe that they can cut the overtime. Uh, we uh, recommended delaying some maintenance on the uh, Station 8 that was budgeted. So, um, the Public Works, um, tree planting, we awarded a contract for um, tree planting and <coughs> removal. We're recommended to just do the removal this year. Contract the snow. Um, we're recommending to uh, slow that down. Um, basically, uh, this year we had, haven't had to use the contractors because we could do it in house. Um, the Public Works Department can handle that. Uh, but again, like many of our services, <coughs> uh, we may have to lower the expectations. Um, basically, uh, our goal is to remove snow within a 24-hour period. Uh, if we're not contracting, it may be longer. Uh, delay the tree and landscaping. Uh, uh, we believe that the street lighting, uh, we can delay some of that. Uh, we can charge salt to the motor vehicle fund. Motor fuel tax. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. Motor fuel tax fund. Uh, that would save the general fund five hundred twenty-one thousand. Um, don't do the Hickory Creek Creek cleaning this year. Uh, cut the Union Station maintenance. Uh, cut the maintenance in the fleet and some temps, and uh, cut the roadways over time. That's a public works uh, recommendations. In legal, uh, we believe that we can cut the professional services contract. Um, that is uh, outside attorneys we hire, uh, cut the postage. And uh, we had a contingency in adjudication if we needed any enhancements to our software of uh, $20,000. 
our software is running good, it's running now, so if there are any enhancements, we will have to put those on at this point. Uh, Can you flip back to the last screen for one second? Sure. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. The IT department has uh, recommended um, cutting their network maintenance, uh, that they will uh, do that in-house. Um, and that kind of goes into our next uh, uh, police. Uh, the, we had uh, budgeted um, 200000 to redo all the cameras on the outside of the police building. Uh, we're recommending to um, uh, delay that. Um, the police department believes that they can uh, lower the overtime to uh, by 750000 uh, The scales there, that's been in our capital budget for a couple of years. Uh, right now, uh, when we uh, have adjudication in overweight trucks, we write a ticket for uh, $750 uh, because their truck is registered at a weight greater than what's allowed on that road. Um, we always felt that if uh, for some reason uh, that would not be allowed, we would buy scales and weigh the trucks. Um, the reason we delayed that is because uh, <coughs> it's, it's very labor intensive. It, it takes quite a while. And, um, but some of these trucks, you know, I've seen fines in other cities up to $20,000 uh, once you weigh them. Um, uh, they uh, decided uh, they can uh, forego some employee training, uh, any training that is not uh, necessary, uh, they can uh, put off uh, until we have a turnaround. Um, again, the same with the uh, uniforms. And uh, uh, the crossing guards, um, uh, we believe we can reduce that, especially since we haven't had to use it because the schools are not in session. Uh, it's anybody's guess what's going to happen next year. So, um, in summary, um, I believe that we probably, to get to the end of the year and maintain a healthy fund balance, we need to cut about $13 million. As you can see, our um, uh, non-employee expenditures were recommending a reduction of about six, a little over six million. Uh, we have uh, not hired and we're recommended not filling positions of of uh, departments that have vacancies. <coughs> so some of these uh, uh, reductions, you may not see a department. Uh, while those departments have uh, come to the table and said, uh, this person has retired, my department's a good example. I have a retiree and I'm recommending not fill in that position, that we will absorb the duties of that position uh, through the rest of our staff. Um, so we estimate that would be about a little over $3 million uh, cuts, which will bring us uh, to a, a gap of about $3.8 million. Uh, we will continue to work. Um, there are many uh, items that aren't on here that have been discussed uh, to get to that $3.8 million. Um, there, you know, we do have reserves. Uh, you know, I can't say enough. We have a good, strong fund balance, over 20 million. Uh, we have cash now, but um, what what's going to happen to us? You know, I liken it to a tsunami, and it's coming. And just because we're looking out right now and everything's calm, this big wave is going to hit us. It's going to hit us hard. And if we start preparing now, we could soften it, and we could. Um, uh, maintain our services, especially our essential services. Uh, but we have to start looking now. And uh, even though our revenues are going to come in in the next month or two, pretty close to budgeted, 
this tsunami, this giant tidal wave is going to hit us. And it's going to hit us hard. I, there's, I don't know how hard, like I said in the first uh, slide. We don't know how deep it is, and we don't, but I would suspect uh, we're going to see a 60 to 70 percent reduction in revenue along uh, July, August, or September. Exactly which month, I cannot predict at this time. There are just so many unknowns. And like I said, you know, I've been looking at models. I've been looking at what happened in uh, uh, you know, the SNL uh, crisis and uh, you know, the property tax crisis. You know, uh, SARS, uh, the bird flu. There was nothing like this. There's no financial model out there that I can, you know, put and say, okay, this is what's going to happen. Financial modeling is based on the past. Clearly, I cannot base what's going to happen in the next year to us on what's happened in the past. Uh, the, the trough is going to be deep. Let's hope it's not going to be long. I got a couple questions. Yes, sir. I did too. Go ahead. Number one, um, with the riverboats, we own insurance for a riverboat shutdown. Um, what's the status of that right now? We uh, purchase um, business interruption insurance when Mr. Hawk was here. And I remember those discussions because I was against it. <laughs> so I, I, will, I will admit it. But uh, he, he said, you know, when the fire happened to Hollywood, the city had uh, 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 had to uh, come to the table and do some deep cuts. So we bought insurance. Uh, we have submit, submitted a uh, claim. Um, as of now, uh, the insurance companies are not honoring it or uh, not denying it. Uh, I think they're kind of a, a wait and see. Um, I will say our insurance is based on property. So what that means is if there's a fire, a tornado, if there's, a, believe it or not, a hurricane, then, they, then we would be covered. Whether uh, this insurance is covering um, a pandemic, a national emergency, most of the experts I've talked to have said no. But we have submitted a claim, um, and they have not said yes or no. Our uh, brokers or uh, representatives have submitted a claim. Um, I do know another fact, uh, McDr McBride's, uh, a, a local eatery, has uh, submitted a lawsuit because their uh, business interruption insurance, they've been told they will not cover it. Um, this is going to take a while to play out. And, um, but like I said, most of the experts are saying that our policy, even though the title says business interruption, the uh, body of the uh, document will not cover uh, a pandemic or what I thought is we were covered if there was a, <coughs> a, an emergency declared. Um, again, we don't know what the states and federal people are going to do. If the insurance companies have to honor business interruption insurance for a pandemic, they will be going to the federal government for a stimulus package. Uh, but that is not our problem. Um, so we have submitted a claim. And again, uh, um, we have been not told yes or no. All right. Um, so Bob, there is a lot of uh, conversation on the uh, congressional end that this could be a stimulus package, obviously, for us, but a bigger stimulus package for every little bar, restaurant operation out there. And the people that are pushing it are saying, let the insurance companies handle the claim. They know how to handle the claims. And then it would be reimbursed by the federal government as some type of a stimulus package. It's just a lot of conversation so far. Okay. Um, Jim, number two. When you projected out the numbers, the losses, <clears throat> your monthly loss had divided, it was all divided by 12. <clears throat> so you have a zeroed out for the rest of the year. Is that correct? That, yes, that would be worst case scenario. We, which we know now that's not going to happen. That's correct. Okay. How, and I, again, I, I'll never fault you for being conservative, but knowing that that's not the right number, how off do you think we are? Or should we expect to be? 
Our largest source of revenue is the sales tax. Um, if you had to guess, if you asked me to guess uh, how much we're going to fall by the end of the year, I would say 40 to 60 percent okay. overall. And there's, um, like I said, there's many line items. These are just the large ones. You know, I look at uh, building permits are down, for example. Um, uh, real estate transfer tax is way down. There's just no business going on right now. People are not out there buying houses. I mean, I'm not saying zero, and that's the problem, is uh, the only ones that will go to zero are the casino taxes, and that's about $17 million. Um, so again, is that going to be for the rest of the year? I believe that they're going to allow them to open up sometime. Uh, let's say it's uh, July 1st. Well, they're not going to open up to full business. Um, they're going to maybe have to put people on every fifth slot machine. Maybe have to close down the craps tables and, or make people stand six feet apart. So um, uh, the recovery is going to be slow. Uh, and we're going to hit this trough. Uh, I think we, if, if we prepare ourselves, we will be able to handle it. And I know it's, it's us, but we are in better position than a lot of cities in this state. Can you repeat that again for uh, our friend in the bank? <laughs> and Mayor, to answer your question in a different way, we've used 12 to 20 million as being kind of an initial working deficit, let's call it. Uh, one of the reasons we came up with 13 million here is we're a little bit above what our lower, you know, what our best case scenario projection is. We don't know. I mean, if this thing goes out another month and a half before the lockdown is, is lifted, we're getting closer to that 20 million. If it's middle of May, perhaps we're getting, you know, close to that 12 million. So again, you know, it, we, we joke. We, neither of us thought we'd ever see a 2008 in a municipality again. Um, there's no model for this. Every town is just communicating. We're sharing a lot of information amongst each other, but it's the same thing. All of our state revenues are down. Anything to do with sales tax, hospitality, casinos, out of the, out of the ball. Jim. Uh, Jim, you mentioned these scales of the police department we weren't going to purchase. But how labor intensive are they? Because the reason I ask that, no pun intended, but wouldn't the fines outweigh the cost in the end? I believe it's a wash at this time. Okay. Uh, because the $750 fine um, uh, seems to be getting their attention and it's write a ticket, that's all it takes. Um, could we write enough of these big ones? Uh, I believe it would be a wash. Our, our adjudication uh, really, uh, we're, we're, we're at about $1.2 million in revenue, which we never had before. So, um, Do we need to look at raising that fine? Uh, I know other, other municipalities have a much higher... I, I will, of course, take any idea. Uh, you know, you, well, the, you know, the 1.2 million revenue, because and, and, that has been so much contentious with some of the council, that's all new money. So, Marty, I know you... 750 is the ordinance violation fine. <coughs> so if you're actually above 80,000, you know, every once in a while you'll see one of those huge con uh, contain. Uh, Right. trucks that are carrying the trucks, those are not 750. Those are written under the state statute, and those are, and I know you mentioned other cities with 20,000. We have had a few of those in our city as well. So we're good with that? Yeah. Okay, just checking. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I'm told a member of council would like to ask a question sure. remotely. Sure, go ahead. Okay, Jim, um, I'd like to go back to the sales tax, and I'm not sure if we've looked into this, it's my understanding that Illinois has suspended um, the sales tax payments for restaurants and drinking establishments, including fast food restaurants as well, until possibly July. How do you feel, or do you are you aware of that? I believe they delayed it rather than suspended it. Um, and again, uh, it's another <coughs> question we have is if, if you're holding back not paying, you know, will they ever pay? Um, uh, if they're uh, delayed right now, and you know, let's 
take a restaurant, they may not be able to open again. They may go bankruptcy. That's uh, one uh, item that uh, we could not possibly know. But uh, yes, it will affect our cash flow. Um, again, uh, we have done the same thing. We have uh, uh, done away with our penalties and interest on both our hotel motel and our food and beverage tax. Um, so, uh, I mean, imagine if you're a restaurant owner and it's a choice between paying a, whole, a tax, which you're never going to get a penalty on, or, you know, keeping a waitress on, on staff. Uh, these are the, the big unknowns about this pandemic is that we don't know how much business is going to be slowed. And I, I don't think anybody would argue that there's going to be bankruptcies, there's going to be closures, you know, there's going to be people uh, who are going to want to start over, go to zero. Uh, many of our uh, restaurants are leveraged. They have borrowed to open up. And uh, are the banks going to forgive them their payments? Uh, uh, we know there's a, a, a one brewery very close to us who is uh, struggling with their payments. Um, so, um, Jim, yes. excuse me, it's Sherry again. I, I'm sorry, I did misspeak. It was, I meant delayed, not suspended. So I, I, I'm sorry about that. Oh, that's fine. But, you know, some of they may suspend some. Uh, I'm sure um, all of you have been getting um, calls, emails to, you know, suspend some of our revenue items. Um, but uh, my recommendation is, you know, we need that revenue to run our business. Our business is government, our business is service. And if we shut down our revenue sources, then the, uh, the trough is going to be deeper and longer. Did I answer your question? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Mayor? Yes, Mike. Um, Jim, I agree that uh, the comments have been made. I think the best approach is the conservative approach. And um, my question is, could you go back to the first slide that you put up showing no recovery for the five months? <coughs> Okay, uh, you see it, Councilman? Yes. Uh, the reason I put this up is that's just a one-month loss multiplied by five. But if you look oh. at the bottom number, you'll see that's $39 million. That's our fund balance. That's a worst-case scenario. My, my question was... My question was, those figures take us out to August 15th, the way I figure it, uh, with not even a soft recovery. Is that correct? September. C correct. But remember, a lot. we're not going to lose 100%. So that's worst case scenario, if we lost 100% right. of this revenue. Right. And that's, that's, that's why I, I like the conservative approach. So those figures are to August 15th. Now, if, if the governor allows a soft opening, uh, uh, say April 30th or May 15th, um, those those deficits will go down, correct? Correct. Thank you. Yes, and remember, again, the sales tax is our largest source of revenue. Um, yes. Uh, we're going to get some sales tax. I don't believe it will be what we budgeted. Um, there's a lot of grocery stores open. We've been there. I've been to Menards on Sunday. Uh, you know, people were six feet apart, but it was packed because <laughs> uh, people are doing their spring cleaning because you're stuck, stuck at home, you know, uh, and uh, doing stuff. So but, just uh, real quick, five months is September 15th, right? May, June, July, August, September. Yes. Okay. Mayor, I went, I went half a month in, in March one month in April, one month in May, um, June is one month, July is one month, and August would be half a month. So is it five months from today or five months from when this started, Jim? But it's, it's just five months, you know. Okay. Uh, I would say from April 1st. All right. Um, again, March revenues okay. so are cut in half. 
Uh, it's between April and uh, between August and September. Okay. This is just a worst case scenario. Okay. Um, how long we could last if we got no. I appreciate that. Yes. So, uh, another thing I should point out is the city manager and I today met with other representatives of the casino uh, cities. And um, to make my point, uh, this plains, they get casino revenue, but they uh, pass that on to 10 other communities. So uh, these communities are going to be hurt. Um, one of them is Harvey. And, uh, we will start hearing about governments in worse shape than us long before I come to this table and say, you know, it, it's time to uh, close down our government. Um, Let's face it, Congress needs to open. Some of the uh, actions that uh, we are um, going to do, we have been doing since this started, continue to monitor our expenditures and approve those only needed for essential purposes. Uh, you experienced this at the last council meeting. I believe uh, a lot of this is going to be going on in the next four or five months. Uh, track cash balances, as I've sh uh, demonstrated, uh, we look at it every day. I'm questioning it every day. And uh, we support any unexpected uh, changes to our city council. And. Uh, I will prepare at least a monthly report. Um, I may have to do it even more, depending. Uh, like I said, in June and July, I'm going to start seeing the numbers, and I'm going to be able to come to you and give you more solid numbers as to where we are, um, how much uh, revenue uh, we're going to use. And then, again, it's going to be between us, the city administration, and the city council who sets policy is what are our reaction going to be? Um, how far are we going to go? How much are we going to have to cut? Um, we're down to expenditures. The, the revenues are very unknown, but uh, we will continue to monitor them um, and uh, bring them back to you. And if we need to call a special meeting, I'm, I'm sure all city council will be ready to do it, especially uh, in these times. Um, one thing I didn't put up here was the water and sewer fund. Uh, we have talked to uh, them also, um, and uh, uh, they had about uh, $17 million in uh, capital expenditures, um, and they have pulled back. Uh, they are only going to do the essential ones for health and safety, and that will preserve some cash in our, our water and sewer fund. So it's not like we didn't talk to them also. Uh, our, my focus tonight was on the uh, general fund. Um, yeah. So uh, additional considerations. The first one I've already talked about. We're going to have a trough. And how deep this trough is and how wide it is is really unknown. Uh, but I fully suspect that it is going to be very deep and I hope it won't be too long. And the last item that uh, I'd like to bring before you is the 2020 budget. In our 2020 budget, we uh, recommended borrowing $13.5 million. Six and a half of that was uh, going to the library for their, their uh, upgrades, and that was going to be funded by the uh, property tax. Four million uh, was going to go into our vehicle replacement fund. And the repayment of that was going to be through the gas tax. And um, three million was going to be to our parking system, and that was going to be paid through increased parking fees. Um, should we, uh, I'll tell you the vehicles, if, if we don't float this bond, I would say we shouldn't borrow any or buy any vehicles unless they're essential. At this point, when I talk to the motor pool, when I talk to Jim Chisna, Mike Hewitt, these vehicles are really needed. Um, uh, we have set it up to borrow uh, 
after July, so our first payment won't come until next year. I believe that uh, on the vehicles, uh, we will get enough money at least to pay the debt off. Um, and then we just won't buy any in 2021. Uh, the parking system, uh, we are working on a, a proposal for that right now, and we all know about the library. Uh, so um, that is our uh, big question right now. Um, I will tell you, um, if we were to borrow, we are never gonna see interest rates as well as they are now. Um, but again, the markets are out there, the people are putting money into municipal bonds because there's so few being floated. But again, that's a policy decision. Um, it's up to council uh, whether uh, we move forward. Uh, those on the finance committee have known that uh, I have been talking about who we would pick as bond council. Uh, I've had uh, two quotes already given to me by the two bond councils we've used, Ice Miller and Chapman Cutler, um, but that's where we're at. We're kind of uh, not moving forward on that until we get a further direction. Mayor? Yeah. I would suggest, suggest in this topic, we certainly should delay a quarter to quarter. You know, we're talking about the immediate restrictions and the somewhat murky predictions we can make on the COVID and the, and, and the restrictions related to it, we don't know how the how elastic the economy is going to be when this comes over. We don't know if there's going to be a Super Bowl bounce, I doubt it, or if there's going to be a complete dead cat bounce. We don't know that. We have nothing but a really foggy, fake crystal ball here. So I would suggest these expenditures we just looked at and the additional considerations that we should delay them up for, by quarter. I don't think we should be taking out any bonds that we guarantee. I mean. If you look at the, um, the, we talked about, Jim, you talked about, we don't know what the default rate for families struggling will be on property tax and such. You know, those bonds will be guaranteed by us. The bonds for the library will be guaranteed by us, and if we come up short 10%, 20%, 80% on the collected property tax, depending on how elastic our economy is after we can get the country, the state, and the city back to work, I don't have a prediction for that. Well, I I would say at a minimum, until we find out if there's any federal aid coming for a city like us, I, I, don't, I think it'd be crazy to even think about floating this bond, in my opinion. What, Jim, what's the rollout on the bond? You know, how long? If, if we were to essentially cancel your issuing the bond. And about the bond before July 1st. For the simple reason we don't want to have it payable within 2020. But... It, it puts us in a little conundrum with the vehicle end of things. We have, for instance, we have the vehicles we pulled off the last agenda. We now have a new ambulance. I know we did order the Quint, and Public Works is in a position where they've got a long lead time with some of the snow plows, some of the, some of the vehicles. So th there is a danger. I mean, it can be done, but there is a danger that we won't make the cycle and some of these vehicles do go down. So keep that in mind. Right, and, and we, again, oh, I hope we don't get there, but I, I think we need a little bit more clear, and maybe the vehicles would be an exception, but the parking system in the library, I, I mean, I, right. I, we I, don't I, know if we're going to be making payroll in six months. Right, I do, I do think to split those, where library and parking system are sort of one consideration and vehicle is another, for the simple reason that the gas tax, the additional three cents in the gas tax was... Estimated to generate 1.6 million. Correct. I mean, even if we had a 50% reduction in fuel sales, which we know isn't going to happen, uh, there's there's plenty of money within that three cents to pay for the four million dollar debt service on an annual basis. So that that becomes something that's sort of a self-sustaining debt service payment. You could argue in the parking system. Obviously, if we're in a depression, we're going to have fewer people parking downtown, fewer revenues. So that becomes an issue. And then the library is something that's, you know, a discretionary item. So literally the three of them have sort of three different sets of criteria. But if you were going to literally guarantee services and fleet integrity and not risk default, I think certainly the, the vehicles with the gas tax backing up that debt service would be a way to go. Is there any way we could cut that vehicle thing in half? 
Uh, you could. It, you know, in effect, what you're doing, though, is that some of those vehicles that are on their last legs aren't going to get replaced. There, <coughs> things could be staged. Keep in mind, the way we had proposed this is there was around $16 million of vehicle fleet needs. What we did was we expected that there'd be a $4 million bond issue in 2020 with no debt service payment, and then we would generate that, uh, that $1.6 or $1.2 million in addition. So in year one, there'd be well over $5 million for fleet. Second year, you would pay the debt service, which is what, about four seventy-five. dollars But then that $1.6 million would still come in, so you'd have discretionary payments above the debt service. So it was almost a way where, you know, we were getting more bang for our buck by the timing of it. So if you went to two million, you know, certain, well, a million's already accounted for with the quint, even though that wouldn't be paid until next year, but your ability to really get into that 16 million is somewhat reduced. It could be done in two bond issues. I mean, if, if the council said, let's wait on the parking deck and the library a bit, um, that, that second two million could be added to the bond issue if you move forward. <clears throat> so there are any number of scenarios. I think it comes down to the fact that, you know, some of these vehicles are starting to get to the point of ordering. And, we and we got to pick, and I think the most important one right now are the vehicles, because we've put it off for so long. But that's my opinion. What was the delivery for, you, you keep referencing plows and being on their last legs. Um, isn't the delivery estimate on plows usually six months or more? What, what are, am I thinking um, emergency vehicles? No, the snow plows are probably 10 months, Larry. 10 months. Yeah, so if we order it in July, we're not getting it for this next winter season. Well, we might get it for the end of the season. And it's the same thing with street sweepers. Right. Um, but we, Steve was right. We are on our last leg. And some, we got vehicles that are in their early to mid-90s. They are very old. I mean, you guys have all seen them. I, I can't reiterate that enough. And I can't reiterate what Steve said. I mean, we talked about uh, a principal interest. Actually, we were kind of told we might pay about 400,000 principal and interest. And that's with probably about a two to 3% interest rate. Jim, I don't think you say you're gonna probably be, who knows what our interest rate might be, 1%? I don't wanna, I mean, if, if we were to go do a bond this summer, what would you think it might be? It'll be below, below one on today's. Below one, so I mean, today's, our, our principal and interest is gonna be much less than that. It'll probably, who knows, maybe it's maybe it's 300,000. I, you know, I think he, Jim was estimating 1.6 million that was a pretty conservative number with the gas tax, with the 3% gas tax. Um, I can't imagine we're not going to at least get, you know, this 300, 350,000, you know, a year to pay off the bond. And the thought always was, if we were to ha take that gas tax, the first thing we would do every year was take out money for the principal and interest. And if, if you remember right, when we, pro when we showed you everyone the, the proposed um, vehicle replacement program, it, that was the first item that came out. We were using 400,000 a year. Any extra money on top of that, we would use to try to purchase more vehicles, you know, for fleet-wide, city-wide. Um, and that's kind of been the goal. And, uh, you know, like I say, we, we strongly recommend that at least we do that. I understand about the parking decks. That could, we could hold off, you know, the, the parking system. But um, it, was, it wasn't just deck repairs. Remember, we were talking about automating the decks. There's a lot more to it. But uh, the vehicles were really, really on our last legs. And it's, and it's not, you know, it's not just street department. I mean, look what we bought. And we, you know, so far we've done the, we purchased the Quint. Um, we bought some vehicles for the planning department. We'd like to purchase four pickup trucks for the ins building inspections. Uh, and that's, that was something we'd like to bring forward next meeting, uh, we, you know, meaning a week from tonight, I guess. Today's right Tuesday. Next now, Tuesday. those purchases, Jim, um, from the bond, or are you talking about from reserve? This, this, is, this is bond money, money we would get ultimately from the bond. So I, I kind of, uh, Mayor, I, I kind of agree with Councilwoman Quillman's suggestion that we we have to get some. I, I know we you know we'll tighten our belt, but two, two million started out in, a, in, in in steps. by going with two million up front, taking it slow. Well, you could take the bond for four million. You don't have to spend it all at the same time. You could right. do it that way, and then we'd still have that. I mean, I, I would suggest that, and then like you said, Jim, do it in stages. One of you, Jim, said that because they are needed, and I think that's an essential. And that actually was the plan because um, with some of these vehicles being in order with delivery in 2021, you know, the, the money would be in our possession and be spent out over probably 12 to 15 months, depending upon delivery time. And, and there would actually be a little interest or not, not much. But a little. Now, there's and a little the side. Is, is low, 
I mean, we could get the four million and just hang on to it. We wouldn't have to spend it all at one time. You, you understand what I'm saying? Right, but once you receive it, that's when the clock ticks on the first payment. Right, but then we'd still be able to hit, be, pay it off, is what I'm saying. Instead of spending it all at one time, get it at that low interest rate that, that she was talking about because it might go up later on. I'm just thinking this this is the most important thing on here right now are the vehicles. Mm -hmm. But again, Agreed. we wouldn't have Agreed. to spend it all at one time. Agreed. You get, you get the $2 million now if you wanted to, and then later on, get another $2 million bond at a, high, at a higher rate, or it might be the same. I was just thinking as long as you get the $4 million at this low rate, we can keep it, and then we don't have to spend it all at one time, but then we'd have the money to pay it. I think, you know, maybe on some of the issues, too, you can go back and reevaluate. Um, I'm not sure what type of pickup. I mean, it sounds like it's a full-sized Ford pickup. Well, the pickups for the inspections, yeah, yeah it's a full-size You size can't go pickup. with a less expensive, smaller. Well, I, actually, I take that back. Those, I think there's are F-150s. They aren't, they're, not a, they're not the same size truck we'd get, like, for the street department yeah. or the utility. They're a smaller yeah, truck. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm no truck expert. Yeah. The other thing I would small. suggest is, that, you know, and I think it sounds like we're starting to agree, like library parking, for sure. Delay that. If we're going to delay the parking system improvements that would have been enjoyed by the people, are we going to delay the increase to them because they're not getting what they were promised? You know, the, the increase to, are we going to, you know, suspend the increase on, on, on the fees because they're not getting what? Well, I, I would urge again to go in the complete different direction with the parking downtown. And I know um, John Bays wanted to address your committee, the, the public service, the public Public safety? No, public service. Um, That's hilarious. Yeah, about, you know, what, what he thought raising the parking rates was going to do to business towns. Now, he's not the only one, but okay, he's, he's the prominent business owner down there or, or property owner. And I, you know, I, I think we should listen to what he has to say, to be frank with you. To raise the parking fees? Is that no, to, 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 to lower? sell the decks oh, and do okay. away with the fees. I see. Make it free parking downtown. Just, just one more thing in the vehicles, and I'll step away. But um, as I mentioned before, you know, it's usually about 10 months for these street, you know, the, the, the uh, snowplow trucks and street sweepers. At this time frame, obviously, there's not going to be a lot of communities purchasing. We might get them quicker because usually there's a delay because there's such a, you know, there's communities all over the state or all over the Midwest buying, like sweepers. Typically, we've got them from Elgin sweepers, not that you couldn't go somewhere else, but. Um, we may get vehicles quicker at this point in time if we actually have some money to go forward. And again, I guess just to, I would just, if we're going to borrow that $4 million, I, you know, I, I feel very comfortable. I mean, I'm, I guess I'm not speaking for, I shouldn't be a finance person, but, you know, I can't imagine we're not going to get enough money every year with the, with the gas, the extra gas tax to pay off the principal and interest. So once you've got to at least go forward, at least to put the $4 million, and, and, you know, and then we'll see every year how it comes in. Uh, um, and I would agree in a recession or even a deep recession, you know, you're not going to lose 50% of your fuel. But you brought up the D word, Steve, depression. And that's not completely ruled out. In a depression, you will lose your fuel. And, you know, do we really need to commit to, I, I don't know, I'm going off the top of my head, is it 300 and some thousand or 280,000 for a sweeper? Is sweeping the streets, should these break down before we get out of this financial um, COVID situation? Is, is, isn't that one of the first things we cut anyways? It's a luxury. Do we need to commit to those kind of purchases, you know, or should we look, you know, the, the snow plows? Absolutely. I mean, as far as the sweepers, they do provide a benefit as far as like, you know, when you get in the rainy season, like now we're in, we're going to start getting in soon. You know, you don't have drains blocked up. You don't you have people coming out more about overtime for flooding issues quicker than if you don't have streets swept. But uh, yeah, I mean, if push came to shove, we could order, go more with the, the trucks, the snow plow trucks and not the sweepers. That, that could be your discretion. You know, and again, we're going so blind here, and Jim, you summed it up. You know, we don't know. We, we don't have a crystal ball. If we did, it would be opaque. We wouldn't be able to see through it anyways. This is, this is unprecedented. We don't have a model to reach back from t a year ago, 10 years ago, or, or 20. And so we don't know how bad it will get, even beyond the restrictions for the COVID-19 virus. We don't know what kind of a bounce it will be. And, and, and we're talking about committing the dollars, and if the revenues aren't there, whether they're 10 down, 10%. 50%, 70% for a longer term, we're, we're going to be in trouble. So we got to be very stingy on this and take this very slow like you're walking in the dark. One more, just a slightly different topic. Mayor, you mentioned before about the downtown business and things. Remember, everyone, we, you know, we are going forward with the reopening of Chicago Street, and I think that's going to provide a lot of benefit to downtown. Um, you know, as a side note, we're fortunate. Our, our contractor is working 
very quickly because there's not much court activity. So we're working on that whole parking lot of, at once. Um, we're actually, they're working on Chicago Street itself. They got the curb in on the west side of the street. I was out there Friday doing a little filming um, for these this little you know Facebook information, trying to show the city what they're what we're still doing, and uh, they're moving along pretty well. And I think that's going to help downtown also. It will. It's a side note. It will. Um, but I'll leave it at that. Unless you have any more questions for me, I'll be right out here. Thank you. Thanks. So where do we go from here? Um, you you know the general game plan, the things that we've shown on this chart, we're holding back on in terms of spending. You won't see these things popping up on agenda. Um, we do have a request for a closed session to continue the discussion. Okay. Are there going to be any agenda items next week? Anything for us to vote on? We, we do have the vehicles. And, you know, if you want to just give this some thought, take a couple additional weeks, we'll revisit it. Maybe we won't put it on the next council agenda, but we'll put it on two weeks from that point. Think about it. If, we're, if we do have an appetite for a $2 million or a $4 million bond issue, we could certainly then get those vehicles approved. If for some reason we're still sitting back waiting, maybe we're getting some indication from the governor or other states as to what's happening, maybe that puts us in a better place in terms of being able to jump into that decision process. Well, let me ask you, I guess I'll take a proxy vote. Are we ready to, to move on that next week or does well, the no, council need more time? The next meeting would be May 4th. Do we want to wait that long? That's what I'm asking. I don't want to wait that long. To move on, what's your issue? The vehicles. Terry? You saying the next meeting? Well, well, yeah, we'll have to know by Thursday. We have to put it on the agenda if we want to move on it or wait till May. Come on, I, next meeting's fine with me. I, uh, I guess I want to ask Jim: Are you going to have any more info, any more, any other tax information or any other uh, revenue information by week from today? No. Right. Okay. Uh, if I may point out, uh, say we borrow four million dollars. All that money is not going to go out the door on day one. That's what I mean. And um, we can, you know, plan. Uh, the problem with a vehicle bond structure is you have to structure the principal to pay back the life of the vehicle that you're bonding for. So some of our vehicles, a 20 year life, a Quinn, uh, you know, a fire engine. Some of them are five years. So the principal will not be a flat amount like your mortgage at home. Another point is, which I always thought was kind of a funny thing, you can use bond money to pay bond payments. So if push come to shove and our first payment come due, let's say next March, and we could say, okay, we're going to use this bond money to pay the debt, and not buy $400,000 worth of equipment. Yeah. Um, there is an economies of scale. Um, I, I would think four million would be the le less amount that we would want to buy. Um, Two million will you know, buy us a fire engine and a few trucks. Four million will help the public works department put a dent in their absolute, absolute needs. And I, I believe, and you believe, you've seen them, our snow plows have to, we have to go to the place. Um, that, you know, the band-aids that they're doing on these snow plows, I, I mean, they're plowing snow with vehicles they shouldn't be plowing with. And that is just costing us more. It's, it's breaking those trucks down. Uh, you know, they're not meant to be pushing that much snow. Uh, so that would be my recommendation. Uh, we currently... The question, you know, the question was if we're going to do this next week or not, right? I'm for next week. Okay, I'm not trying to cut you off, but... Okay, yeah. fair. Mike Turk, are you ready to go next week on this? Not a problem. Sherry? Yes, I'd like to go next week. Betty, Don? Good to go next week for me yep. here. Okay. Yes, I'm good with next week. Okay. Where? Okay. Yeah, oh, and so moving forward before we adjourn and go into the executive session, the suggested cuts and delays in payments on some of the grants that we give out, right? You've started doing uh, some of those cuts and, and cutbacks that we outlined, or you're going to moving forward start doing it? When you say grants, 
which, which I, that's what the Rialto is. It's a grant. Oh, yeah. uh, we paid half of their amount. Well, I got that. Apparently, it's two payments. One would one would be at the end of 2020, so that's something that would be out there. So the other, some of the other departmental that you went through with the overtime cuts, you already started doing overtime. Oh, I see what you're saying. I'm Did sorry. you already start you doing grants, that? Or? I thought you meant outside. Well, I said the cuts and the grants because those things aren't, you know, necessary. Some of this is already underway, such as not filling positions, not purchasing some of the things, not pursuing some of the projects. Some of it will be moving forward. So it's a combination. It's a hybrid. Okay. Um, would note that no one signed up on the portal for um, public comments, and we received no email for public comments for this meeting. So is there a motion to go into executive session to discuss collective bargaining and personnel, um, after which the meeting will be adjourned? So moved. So moved. Second. I'm making a second. Okay. It's been um, motion and seconded to approve. We'll talk about it. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilwoman Reardon. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Motion carried.